for me, I, I am. I think um, you all know me because we've been we've been uh, communicating. Uh, I am here as the as as the speaker tonight, but I do chair the e-learning specialist group, and I feel it's an honor for me to be able to serve everybody in that position, and we'll try to see uh, how we can reach to the furthest corner corner of the world uh, uh, this way to promote. Uh, education, which I believe is the key to freedom, is the, key to, is the key to development, is the key to success. And for tonight, my talk is looking at encouraging women, girls, and people of the Black, Asian, and minority descent into STEAM in collaboration with universities. Uh, yeah, the next slide, please. And the outline of my presentation I, I, I consist of the following. We'll look at the introduction where, where I put things in context and stress the importance of STEM education, but here the focus is on uh, collaborating with universities. And then we'll look at the strategies, that uh, the strategies for encouragement, strategies for engagement, and strategies for support of such initiative, of collaborative initiatives. And then I'll present some case studies with BCOS. BCOS stands for uh, the Belfast City of Sanctuary. Uh, all immigrants that have been displaced, refugees, asylum seekers, and all of them. That is an organization that sort of worked with them. And for the first time last year, until now, um, uh, yeah, through the BAME, that's the, the BAME Plus Network, of which I'm chair here, I've reached out to the Belfast City of Sanctuary to uh, to, in, to put forward some initiative and support it, the education initiatives uh, for this group of people who are displaced and have no hope. Uh, some, some of them have no hope. And some of, some of these people, which will surprise you, some of them are medical doctors, some of them are pharmacists, some of them are uh, teachers who have been displaced. And because they are asylum seekers, they are not allowed to work and they have no fam family members with them. And they're like just lost, lost people. And we have to reach out to them uh, to, to look at where some of the skill gaps are and uh, address, address this. Uh, uh, among the case studies too, uh, the diverse youth Northern Ireland, the diverse youth Northern Ireland comprise of youth from all backgrounds, British, Irish, European, uh, Indians, Africans, all of them. These are young youths. Uh, it, the diverse youth NI as an organization brings them all together and these people they merge uh, together and they've reached out to us here in the university collaboratively with the, the diverse youth we've been able to put forward some digital literacy program uh, to address some of their talents and enhance it for, for, for service to uh, to the society here. We also have the uh, the ANM ANM stands for all nations ministries and the all nations ministries incidentally actually today we have about 16 of them who graduated with a certificate in ICT skills training um, and it's uh, after about eight months of us uh, teaching them we put them through a digital literacy uh, program uh, uh, scheme here in the university and for the past 15-16 years uh, myself and my lab we've, we've, we've engaged the Northfield Trusts uh, and the Sentinels Research Academy here in, in Northern Ireland. Uh, uh, for, uh, we have a summer scheme where uh, the pre-university uh, students, they come into our labs, you know, to access uh, resources and uh, to complete some specific um, uh, uh, research programs, uh, encouraging them into the, to go into the university. And the third, uh, the, 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 the fourth item in my outline is I will, through all these years, we've identified limitations and areas uh, that we could actually take forward in our work on. And some of these would be the impact assessments uh, that involve multiple identities, uh, the spread of such programs, and having a global take on some of these initiatives, as, as well as encouraging collaborations, not just with universities, but with industries and voluntary organizations out there. And even professional bodies such as the e-learning specialist group uh, uh, that, that we are doing now. Then there will be the conclusions and recommendations for, for future work. 
Next slide, slide please. Oops. With the introduction. Uh, uh, no, uh, the uh, introduction, the context. Now, uh, MFA in her initial presentation spoke about underrepresentation. And it goes without uh -huh. saying, yes, and it goes without saying that underrepresentation of women, girls, and individuals from the BAME backgrounds in STEM uh, is, is an issue that has been of concern worldwide. Uh, it's not only here in the UK, it's not only in Europe. But even in America, if you go to Brazil, you go to Argentina, you go to India, you go to anywhere in the world, this is the case. And it, 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 there is all, uh, there's an ongoing failure to address this issue. And we know that this ongoing failure to address this, this issue will affect the, our ability to address diversity and inclusion in various sectors. It will also serve to limit the potential uh, a talent pool that is available for our various industries and uh, the various sectors that there are in our, in our society. Universities, we know, they are storehouses of knowledge and they possess the, the right personnel and they, 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 a store bank of, uh, of resources to seek and use uh, the right approach to resolve the challenges that, that are facing providers of STEM education. Anywhere in the world. We'll go on to the next slide, please. Now, uh, women and girls, oftentimes, I know uh, even today during the graduation ceremony, I have the Sheikh with me, whom I, uh, the, the Sheikh from the Muslim uh, community. We know, even in the African community and so on and so forth, uh, there have been strong calls that have been put forward for gender imbalance that exists in various communities. Uh, this is not something that we should take uh, lightly anymore. We really need to address it and address it robustly. Also, um, I, I think I, I, we, last year, um, uh, I, I gave a, talk, a keynote address at Columbia University in New York. And uh, it goes without saying that uh, uh, the, black, the blacks in, in America, they are still going through a lot. Uh, but I go with what uh, Martin Luther King Jr. stated. He said, if you can't fly, you walk. If you can't walk, you crawl. Now, he said, but whatever you do, never stop going forward. Always keep going forward. Never look back. You know, you can look back for, for lessons, but just keep that spirit up. Up forward ever, backward never. So just be positive, you know, just be positive and work with the positive energies around you. And I tell you what, you will make it. And that we've seen that happen in America, even up to the, before, before Joe Biden and before uh, Donald Trump, we had a black person as president of America. Nobody would have actually thought that that was going to happen, but it had happened. And it's going with that spirit of uh, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Historically, women uh, and individuals from the BIM communities have faced barriers to entry and progression in STEM fields. And no matter how many papers, you may be publishing 200 papers, sometimes the institution will fail to recognize that and promote you. And yet you find people who, uh, you know, maybe they've only got 10, 15 publications, but because, because they come from certain ways, automatically they are made, whether professors or whatever, uh, they are exposed to whatever uh, they may be. But that does not mean you, as somebody from the, the disadvantaged background, you give up and don't complain, but just continue doing the good you do. And someday, sometime, the road you are clearing uh, will be tra traveled by uh, others coming after you to make it. And what, what we are here for it is promoting the steam fields for people that, have, you know, that, that haven't got the opportunity you know, to, to avail of it. Uh, there are several factors, you know, they, uh, these, these we know are, have been due to systemic and societal factors. And I've named such factors here as comprising of uh, stereotypes, the cultural norms, the lack of representation, unconscious biases, limited access to resources, 
and in an inadequately tailored educational opportunities that exists uh, uh, in various places and at different levels. Um, I want to talk about collaboration with universities. And I think those of us in the universities, we, we know where we've come from and we should open the doors, open the doors to people of, uh, uh, open the doors to women, open the doors to, to, to girls and open the doors to people of, of BAME descent. The, the society, uh, we, for, for us, we, we see collaboration as very, very important. Universities are important really, uh, because they play a vital role in facilitating change uh, and inclusion in STEM disciplines. Uh, they serve as hubs of knowledge, research and innovation. Uh, for example, it was with the help of, of the UNESCO that, uh, that we were able to set up uh, a lab here uh, since 2017. And that lab today, uh, incidentally today, produced the second cohort of, of uh, the digital uh, uh, of, uh, uh, people from the BIP background that have actually uh, uh, received their certificates there. Collaborative efforts between universities, organizations, and communities uh, can in no small measure uh, foster the necessary infrastructure, uh, uh, create the, the right resources, and support systems to encourage and empower individuals from marginalized groups. The next slide, please. The strategies for encouragement and support, there are many and varied, but I've just listed a few, a few of them here. The first is outreach programs and exposure. Um, for example, I want to really seriously thank the ELM Specialist Group and the BCS uh, for uh, really the support they've given uh, to, to people of, uh, that's to women, uh, girls, and people of BAME descent uh, all over the world by organizing such a seminar series, such as the one we have tonight, that anybody from any part of the world can participate in this year and be exposed to, to recent developments in the field. So uh, the outreach programs and exposure uh, will comprise of hosting outreach programs that target schools and communities, particularly those with limited resources. Uh, uh, and these are there to raise awareness about the STEM fields and promote inclusivity. These programs tend to focus on showcasing diverse role models, uh, providing hands-on experience for people. Uh, for example, our virtual physical labs, our virtual laboratories, and our augmented, uh, augmented reality applications. Organizing STEM fairs, workshops, and science camps for different people. There's also the mentorship and networking opportunity strategies uh, that, that will serve to connect women connect girls and connect people, uh, 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 BAME individuals with experienced, in, uh, with experienced professionals uh, for access to crucial guidance, uh, uh, advice, and encouragement. Uh, I know uh, many BAME, BAME professors, BAME lecturers here that have encouraged a lot of BAME students uh, that, uh, that engage in uh, research projects and, re and uh, uh, different programs. Even tonight, I, I, I came across and uh, a BAME parent, a BAME parent who is well to do. And uh, the, the children are back home uh, in, in, uh, in this country, but came here, about, about three of them, just to look for admission for them. And uh, the BAME parent was confused which subject to go for. And they said, oh, business would be better for them. Uh, but by, by, by hook or by fluke, you know, the BAME parent was talking to me. And uh, tonight, I, I was telling them of opportunities that exist in the STEM areas, that's uh, in computing, in engineering, and so on. And after much talk, uh, the BAME parents said, well, I have the money to, you know, no matter how much it takes, that these people will now come to Ulster University starting from uh, uh, October this year to come and study computing and also engineering, three of them. And I, I later asked the, the parent, the, 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 the father, I said, but what about yourself? He said, no, I'm unedu uneducated, uh, you know, but however, I have the money. I'm a business person back, back home and I have a lot of money. You know, my children, all four of them, I want them to be properly educated. And they, they are coming here to study. There's also scholarships and financial assistance, which can be created as a strategy. Uh, this will help to alleviate uh, financial barriers to enter and progress in STEAM education. The curriculum and teaching practices. Uh, 
I think decolonizing the curriculum is a big thing at my uni uh, All Star University. We are we've actually embarked on that process uh, as, just as we speak. Uh, <laughs> the Center for Curriculum Evaluation and Approval uh, has actually 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 uh, swallowed or taken over uh, the academic office. And it, seriously, we are looking through the curriculum to make sure that the curriculum we are we are we are. <laughs> we are engaged with is fit for, for purpose. They are, real, they, are, they, are real, they are relevant. And people from, from India, from Africa and everywhere can actually see part of their cultural uh, uh, undertakings in those uh, reflected in those curricula. Uh, research opportunities and internships should be created. Uh, we have paid inten internships, we have unpaid internships, or uh, uh, voluntary internships. I, the, these are measures that can be taken to, uh, to, to encourage and support uh, women girls and people of, uh, of BAME descent to participate in STEAM education. So go on to the next, the next uh, slide, please. The case studies and best practices. Uh, there are many that, that I could cite here, but for purposes of time, we'll try to be brief. Uh, I, I've listed five of them there broadly. The first is the All-Star University Sentinels Research Academy uh, program. That, uh, that have been going for well over 14, 15 years. Um, and it's one that involves study and research placement for students from a wide variety of backgrounds from any school in Northern Ireland as a whole. Um, the time I initiated that program some 15 years ago, I was termed a mad, a mad lecturer. They uh, said, you deserve your holidays. Why are you doing this? You know, uh, how much are you getting? You could get funds for this. Where is the fund? You haven't got funds. Where is the space? Okay, you are lucky you are the faculty learning coordinator. Uh, but I would have said you haven't got enough time, but you know, we know you, you, you haven't got enough time, but why are you taking this on? You know, but today I don't regret it. I think uh, it's something that has worked well. Many of the students uh, before coming to the university, uh, they've come to the, to the university to engage in that program. Uh, and I didn't know it was going to encourage them to come to Ulster University. They've come to Ulster University. Some have gone to Newcastle, some have gone to Huddersfield and everywhere. And wherever they are, they always say thank you to Ulster University for allowing them to participate in that program. There's also the, the, UU, the UU Northfield Trust Program. Northfield uh, supports people from disadvantaged backgrounds, you know, but who have uh, a great uh, future, you know, who perform well. Uh, uh, Northfield supports them on a summer pl placement pro uh, program. And I've uh, opened my lab here in the university for them to come and, to come and, uh, to, to come and uh, complete that uh, program. And it has, it, ha it has worked well for them. And for the past five years, I've allowed, uh, as part of that program, I've allowed uh, people of BAM descent who are in, in schools here, uh, seeking, uh, uni uh, well, exploring, the university as an option to join that Northfield placement program. And through interacting with these bright students, I, it, so many things, good things do come up from there. Also, there's the UUB course, which I've also or, or already mentioned, the Belfast City of Sanctuary for people that are displaced uh, physically, mentally, or whatever, you know, to, to, to sort of find themselves or find out what, what areas in future they could possibly engage with to make life better for themselves. And these have received support in no small measure from the Belfast City of, uh, that's the, uh, the Greater Belfast City Council. And it's an ongoing support that we receive from them. There is the, the UU Diverse Youth Network that works with uh, youths from different backgrounds, those, those that come from rich home, from poor home, and from all <laughs> really diverse youths. Those that are, that are poor, those that are rich, those that are big, those that are small, and we bring them all in there. And uh, by interacting with one another, they do a lot of things. And uh, true, uh, the focus here is on STEAM, the STEAM, uh, the STEAM education. There's also the UUANM, uh, the All Nations Ministry. And as I said today, we have 16 of them that graduated with their certificates uh, as a result of more than eight months of dedicated service trying to, uh, to perfect uh, ICT skills uh, in, in order that they can function. Uh, we have three broad levels. Uh, of uh, of uh, of this training, the first level is the fundamentals, digital uh, IT skills. The second level is the applications, and the third level is living online, where they do everything online. So those the the graduates of today 
they've completed the level one, that's the fundamentals. And they've already enrolled for the level two, that's the applications. And then uh, before they, they go on to living online. Uh, the next sl slide, please. Uh, observations and results. Um, in all of these really, we, we, there are different ways of engaging our students and we promote a lot of uh, interactions. We promote the three core uh, elements uh, or levels of interaction for students, which, which is really the student-student interactions, the student-tutor interactions, and the student material interactions, both synchronously and asynchronously. And we found that our programs have led to fostering diversity at all levels. Uh, local and international students, they are mixing. Local and foreign and foreigners, they, they, they mix together for the sake of STEAM education. And they, they, they find themselves doing many, many things. And it's amazing how some of my programs here, my programmers here, computer programmers, how the, the, the cooking of a uh, uh, typical well-loved uh, African food called moi moi, um, how augmented reality applications have been uh, used to teach people how to make it online. And uh, to actually, it, 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 it's fascinating to see that there. And uh, through these uh, programs, we've seen inclusion as not just word that you say, but as something that, uh, but as, as an action that, that, you are, that you are actually getting engaged in. And also uh, talking about innovation, Innovation has no ceiling through, through this, some of these art programs here. It's, it's amazing how some people be, being able to use, uh, 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 being skilled now to use the word processor, they write, uh, they're able to come up with stories from their homes, uh, stories that we never have heard before. They're able to write it and submit it. Uh, and these, these exist both in research and in teaching as well as in learning. For not only just the students, the learners, but even for the teachers themselves. That both we find ourselves being with ultra priority. Also, uh, the university um, is beginning strongly to address the disparities that exist in uh, STEM participation in the diverse groups that exist in the university. Uh, just three years ago, we launched the BAME Plus Network. That's the Black, Asian, and Minority Ethnic uh, Network that has seven working groups and uh, is moving and shaking all sections of the university at Ulster University here. Now this was achieved by implementing targeted outreach programs. Now, valuable research opportunities involving schools, they are well on their way today. As, as you must have learned uh, from the 31st of August last year, we moved uh, our campus from Jordanstown campus to the Belfast, to the heart of the Belfast city. Now, um, the, uh, the university established the Jordanstown Sports Village and the Jordanstown community, the New York communities told the university if they are to continue the academic, and the academic work of the university should not cease in that place there. And so they've called on us to establish an academic program there. And it's through these activities, the BAME activities, that we are able to, to maintain touch with the local school there, the best, Belfast High School that is based in, in our old campus. Now, also through these activities, nationally, we have, we'll be engaged in the KTP program here, the Knowledge Transfer Partnership Program, and we, uh, which has now become a national flagship uh, because the Central and Macalope Engineering uh, Consulting and Services Group, uh, with some of the work that we've done with them have been flagged as a national success uh, throughout the UK. We all, we've also seen the realization of some form of collective potential and talent of all individuals, irrespective of gender and ethnic background. And this is to tell you uh, that what through the e-learning work that we are doing, uh, uh, the people of BAME descent, women and girls, they are benefiting from here. And I think if it would be good if we can have it replicated, uh, but not, not just nationally, but globally where we can. So the next slide, please. I've decided to, to, to put this slide here, just to let you know, uh, uh, we, uh, well, I do work in more than 35 different countries in Africa. Uh, and one of those African countries is uh, Kenya. Uh, when we talk about education, the relevance, growth, development and sustainability, I've just put in here, um, a lady in, uh, in Nairobi there in, in uh, Kibera, who uh, 
is responsible for the education of all her children. Okay, at home, she's a teacher, she's a mother. Okay, but during that 24 hours in a day, she has a stall, you know, for selling food. So this same woman who is the mother at home, who is a, a teacher at home, is also a businesswoman and is here on her stall putting out plants and items for sale. So he's saying, see her as, as a businesswoman. Uh, now, the children she has at home, when I, in the evening she goes home, they are there in the school being educated, okay? Uh, and edu it, 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 seeing education, education should be seen in all its light here. Now, they are not being educated to become just business people. They are not just being educated to become classroom teachers. They are not being educated to become doctors or something of sort, but they are being given the general picture. Now, when we say education here, or STEAM education here, our, our, uh, the woman you see in the picture here could become the doctor, could become the artist here, could become the, the engineer, could become the so many, many different things here. So instead of placing the woman of just saying the woman singly as a woman, a mother at home, we should see that woman as a young girl that you are seeing there, who holistically is both an engineer, is a businesswoman, is a teacher, and is so many other different things. So when we here we are pushing for the education of women and girls and people of BAME, of, 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 of BAME descent, we should rather put on a holistic lens to, to see that and say their STEAM should be seen holistically, not, not singly as, as a subject. And that this is what e-learning is trying to make, make us uh, realize. And we can do things physically face to face, but we can also do it online the way we are doing today. Next slide, please. Now there are obvious limitations and, and uh, that uh, brings us to lessons and uh, make us to recognize areas for future work. One is the lack of long-term impact assessment. The work that we that I'm, that I've reported that uh, tonight have all uh, uh, the results of initiatives that are new. So the uh, the impact on representation and retention are still not fully understood and need more research work need to be done in this area. There's also the question of intersectionality and multiple identities. I see myself as black. You see yourself as white and a different other things. But we have children that are neither black nor, 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 nor white. And these people, they have multiple identities. Are we creating the right environment for them? You know, but it, so the issue that we are dealing with cuts across inter intersectionality of identities, including race, ethnicity, gender identity, disability, and how these affect access and representation in STEM is something that we should be addressing now. There's also the global perspective. You know, uh, today's talk really uh, reports on work done uh, in the region in a specific context. Further and future work will need to, to include broader analysis of strategies and initiatives implement, implemented, not only nationally, but internationally in different countries and in different cultural contexts. Then also that brings me to the issue of pedagogy, that's the teaching practices. Uh, much of the research we hear today uh, looks at pedagogy in online teaching practice, in online learning practice, or in online research practice. But we need to do some more in-depth research and evalu evaluation of the pedagogical methods that promote inclusivity in STEM education, enhancing learning experience with increasing retention rates. Uh, finally here, I, I want to touch on collaboration frameworks. We have looked at uh, university uh, organization collaboration, but we should be looking at uh, university communities collaboration, university church collaboration, and also uh, collaboration involving businesses and the public sector. Next slide, please. And I want to pose a question to each and every one of us here, both as individuals and even as collectives. Where are we heading? 
are we heading to a world of chaos? Uh, for example, today we are talking about climate change. Uh, do we fully understand it? STEM has some tools and techniques. STEM is helping us uh, train individuals, prepare people uh, to help us address these challenges that we are faced with. And uh, are we preparing people uh, only some specific people from, from specific countries of specific race to address this global issue, to address this, this global problem, or want to prepare everybody to be ready for this problem. So that's why I've put this slide here. It's a question for all of us. And our talk tonight, trying to encourage women, girls, and people of BIM descent into, into STEAM education, uh, you know, it helps, helps us to really look at this here, look at these slides, and uh, it, it helps to arouse that question in, in our minds. So the, uh, the next slide, please. I, this brings me to conclusion, uh, the conclusion of my talk. Uh, and in conclusion, really, uh, and recommendation, uh, I want to say the talk has focused on encouraging women, girls and individuals of BAME descent into STEM. Uh, we should see this uh, as, as an endeavor that requires collaborative efforts between universities, organizations, governments and communities. Universities, we know, they play a pivotal role in creating an inclusive and diverse STEAM workforce through targeted strategies such as outreach programs, mentorship opportunities, financial assistance in some cases, and the use of inclusive curriculum or research internships to achieve these objectives. It is recommended uh, through the work we've done that universities develop and implement diversity and inclusion policies that explicitly address the issue of underrepresentation of women, of girls, and of individuals of BIM descent in STEM fields. Universities should seek to establish dedicated offices and centers for diversity and inclusion. And these centers and offices should be equipped with personnel and adequate resources to support initiatives such as, such as some of the ones mentioned tonight aimed at promoting STEAM participation amongst underrepresented groups. And finally, I'll say universities should seek to always review and revise curriculum and teaching materials to ensure representation and inclusion of diverse perspectives that they are privileged to have as an institution or as a storehouse of knowledge. So we'll go to the next slide, please. What do, what, what, what do we do? And we have uh, the suggestion here. What we can do is offer help through the work that I've presented here tonight. And also to, to always remind ourselves never to give up. We should never give up. Uh, so I say, what universities, business, including women, girls, and individuals of business descent to do is to help one another. And here I have the, the, uh, the video. If you just play the video, please. Like uh, the video is about the two topics. Um, you just say yes, just hit okay. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And it should work. Mm. Oh, it's not working? No. Oh, okay. You could. You if, could I, uh, if I stop sharing, I can uh, load it up from uh, your email. Okay, yeah, please do. Please do. Load it from the email. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, do you want to actually look at the questions? There's a couple of questions in the chat while I'm doing oh, this. Yes. Okay, let me, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll chat, yeah. Yeah, question for MFA. Okay. Is MFA with us now? I think she's with us. Yes. MFA? 
Can you hear me? Oh, yes, let me find it. Yes. Let me find it. Uh -huh. There's a question there. The question, the question here says, um, uh, as a white woman, that's from Zoe, Zoe Tompkins, say, as a white woman, how can I be an ally to BAME women and girls? I am aware of my privilege and power. I want to avoid being a white savior. So, MFA. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think there's a lot that uh, each and every one of us, you know, we, we all have a role to play. Yes, you're a white woman. You don't want to come as a savior. So things, it's about partnership. Yes, the home, what, what I was talking about before, connection, you know, before the poor connection setting, it, it's all about role models and providing resources and, and, and uh, conducive environment for these minorities or even including women in general. You know, we need... Um, conducive environment to thrive, you know? So there's a lot that each and every one of us can do. And sorry. you won't be considered a savior, you know, when you come in partnership. Um, so- uh, I'm sorry. I think, Zoe, Zoe, there's a lot you can do. Uh, I think just- I'm just sorry. To, uh, yeah, is it is it okay, um, uh, Margaret? I, I'm afraid. Uh, should we should we go? Uh, uh, I think that. Um, sorry. I think I think we're okay now. Okay. Good. Yes. I hope uh, I can, if I can share this. Yes, try it now. So okay. Zoe, you've had uh, MFA there. I know they have uh, technical problems as well, but uh, all she's saying, that, anyway, I'll, I'll talk after, after that. Okay. What you have before you are two turtles. A question of help. For those who have and those who have not, you can see how persistently the other turtle has not given up in helping the, the, the turtle on its back. And eventually, they succeed. So talking about giving help to women, girls, and people of BAME descent, in, in uh, taking up uh, STEAM education, we can do just as these two turtles have done there. They, you know, if you want to go far, that's if, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go with a companion. Now the other turtle knew they wanted to go far and had to stay, you know, to help the other turtle uh, on its back. Uh, uh, so that they can, they can, they can go far. The turtles, we know, they are never in a hurry, they, but they always are successful. Now, the, the next slide, which is the one of not giving up. What we can do, never give up. You can play that as well. Is there any, any lock with it, Margaret? Is it shared? Was that shared, that last one? No, yeah, it, I, think, I think you shared it, but now 
I can see. Did you? Um, was it shared? The never give up one. Yeah. No, it didn't. It didn't. Yeah, it wasn't shared. So okay. If you, uh, if I just do that again. Okay, hang things, on. You never give up if you just share it. Okay, I just get pull us up again. Yeah. With luck. <laughs> Sorry about the problems. I do apologize. No yeah. Right then. Hopefully, if I can go into a very quick share. Yeah. If you give up. Yeah, that's, I can hear it, but I can't see it. So we need to just share the screen. That's yeah. the guarantee of quitting. Okay, and yeah. It will never happen, no way under the sun. The only way the possibility remains that it can happen is if you never give up no matter what. Okay. So um, it does, it's, it's just, and then we'll go back to the slides, please. And then share, just share the slide and then I'll finish the talk. Okay. Um, yeah. Oops, sorry. Thank you. Thank wrong, you. Wrong one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. That's here we go. Yeah. Sure. So uh, I think we yes. were on about the yeah, last slide. The, yeah, the last slide, exactly. Yeah. Yes. I had to never give up with just talk. Uh, so, so I think. But uh, by uh, is never give up, you know. If you hold on to something good, if you are doing something, you know, never give up. You know, never give up. And th that's the thing that I think. Even for today, I, I've learned something from so many different people. We have Margaret with us here, and we have members of the Eleni Eleni uh, uh, Specialist Group Committee that I know from the time we established Eleni since two thousand and eight with all the, the good ideals, the good plans, the good objectives, the good aims we, 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 we stand by, that's, we've never given up on it in trying to reach the farthest corner, even before COVID, before anything else. And the aim of the ELN specialist group is to reach out to the underrepresented, is to reach out to the farthest corner of, of, uh, of the world to make sure that we bring education to them. And thanks to the BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT, for allowing the specialist group to, to deliver on that. And I, a big thank you to, to Margaret, whom I know, I know, big, come rainfall sunshine, have always been by our side, making sure that the message is out there, sound and clear, that we are there promoting education. And I think, so just to finish my talk for tonight, is to thank you for your understanding, thank you for your patience, and for listening to, uh, to the keynote address on, on, on this issue. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.